Joining us now to discuss is Steve Ehrlich, founder and CEO of Voyager Digital. Hello there, Steve. Thanks for joining us. So can you confirm trading volumes have been a little low over the past week? What trading trends do you find most interesting over the holidays? Uh, well, thanks for having me again. Appreciate being here. But yeah, as your chart showed, I think the volumes that we've seen uh, across all the exchanges and marketplaces have been a little bit lighter over the last week to 10 days. I think that's people just managing their positions, uh, getting ready to start the new year, uh, closing off some tax positions, getting ready to enter 2022 with a clean slate. Uh, we have seen that volume, but you know, the other side of that is the altcoins have actually gotten some extra volume at, you know, in the last week too. Uh, but from a Bitcoin perspective, less volume, there's less volatility, right? I mean, it did go below 50,000 uh, 24 hours or so ago, then it bounced back, but we're trading in range. And I think, you know, once we hit the new year, we'll see it break out of that range. Uh, maybe we'll get a late Santa Claus rally here uh, into New Year's, but I I'm expecting a lot more volume come into the new year. You know, it's funny you should say because Coindesk's DeFi index is shooting past 31%. Why, why, do you, why do you think that is, that we're just seeing this huge activity in DeFi versus Bitcoin? A little more muted. Yeah, look, I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, in the DeFi land. There's a couple of coins that we've seen specifically that have driven a lot of interest, and that's Avalanche, that's the Sandbox, uh, that's Luna. Obviously, Luna's been up, I think, you know, almost 100%, you know, from a month ago. And then Nervos, we've seen a lot of activity there. And I think people are starting to gravitate to some of these protocols that, that are getting some adoption, that are starting to see more and more consumers uh, start to use, you know, in a little bit of ways, uh, more so than Ethereum. So we're starting to see that with, with those four coins in particular uh, over the last week or so as the prices have increased on those as well. So interesting. What are your top predictions for 2022? <laughs> I actually think, uh, you know, I think the, the market itself is going to explode. I think NFTs have really started showing some of the use case of all the protocols. And so I think 2022 will be the real adoption. Uh, 2021, we saw more and more people come in. We're going to see a huge influx of consumers coming in in 2022. I think some of the institutions will start coming in even to a higher degree now uh, as they see some of these protocols really actually uh, take take hold and actually have projects behind them. And you're starting to see a lot of venture money come into a lot of the protocols as well. So I think 2022, we're going to see this explosion of crypto across Bitcoin and all the altcoins. What's your shorter term outlook for Bitcoin, let's say in the first quarter of 2022 versus a more long term prediction of where the price is headed by the end of the year? Yeah, I think in the first part, you know, January, people start resetting. So the first quarter might be a little slow uh, in that. But I think as we start getting into the second quarter of the year and into the summer, you're going to see even more projects come on board uh, through a lot of the protocols. And I think you'll start seeing uh, price increases more towards you know the summer months into the April, May, June and into the summer months. You'll see a lot more activity uh, come at that point in time. I think we'll still see a little bit muted in the first month or two, but then you'll see a lot of a lot of activity, you know, after that. you have any price predictions? Ah, uh, my last price prediction wasn't, uh, wasn't spot on. So, uh, look, I think we'll see 100,000 uh, by June, you know, the latest, actually. Everyone has a different answer. Okay. Other than that, I see <laughs> you posting those courtside Dallas Mavericks tickets. Uh, and for anyone watching, don't look up on Netflix. Uh, Voyager made a small cameo. So you're doing a lot to normalize Bitcoin in everyday lives, which will be key as governments around the world look to develop regulatory frameworks for the crypto industry in the new year. How do you believe regulation should be shaped? I think every country is starting to look at it probably differently than they did 12 months ago, because I think you're, you're seeing this adoption. There's a lot of retail holdings behind a lot of, you know, the currencies, Bitcoin, you know, in particular. And I think people are trying to figure out the best way to actually bring fair uh, and reasonable regulation to the marketplace. And, and I think you'll start seeing more of that in the U.S. as well. Because I think there's thoughtful regulation is important to the growth of the industry. And whether it's on the trading side or coin side, 
this thoughtful regulation will really help the industry grow. And then when you do see things like our our, our little cameo in, in Don't Look Up and you know more and more uh, crypto companies into sports, us with the Mavericks, as you mentioned, you're seeing this adoption. I think that thoughtful regulation will really bring a whole new level of consumers into the marketplace who are really trying to find a way to come in and want regulation to actually enter the space. Mm -hmm. So governments are looking at it, but also also, uh, people who are building the industry are looking at specifically Jack Dorsey, and he's brought up this debate about Bitcoin versus Web3 and VC investors coming into the fold and trying to promote decentralization versus centralization among a couple of entities. I wonder where do you fall in that budding debate? Yeah, I don't I don't have a, a clear cut opinion on that. You're know, doing a lot of research on it, but I think with any innovation actually, you know, there are early adopters. Uh, a lot of the early adopters investors tend to be VC funds, so they do jump in early uh, and take risk with that. Uh, but you know, I, I haven't really gone through this and come up with my own opinion yet uh, that I want to share. That I think we're still I'm still evaluating where it goes. I think Web three is extremely mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, the metaverse is interesting. A lot of our customers are asking us uh, what we're doing about it. And we're going to come out with some some items in 2022. But there's still a lot of ground to be developed. And we're still trying to form our opinion. 